Managing data effectively is crucial. I mean, having an outdated system to collect, sort and process data is not only slowing you, but it also means losing automation, collaboration and innovation opportunities. This week, we will discover API Table, a free open source visual database platform. It is ready for real-time collaboration, API-oriented and easily embeddable anywhere. If you are using Spreadsheet as a database, you should absolutely watch this video to discover this alternative. Before diving into the platform overview, let's have a look at the different options available to install it. You can use the paid cloud version available at aitable.ai. They provide a free tier up to two seats. Or you can install the self-hosted version by following their installation procedure. Or use a platform like ours to deploy the self-hosted version on the cloud provider of your choice or your own server, while we take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To install API table, go to ls.io, hit login, click on deploy my first service, search for API table, click on select, choose between the different cloud providers, I will choose Kaleway, Select between the different regions and service plan. I would keep the first one and hit next. Adjust your level of support based on your needs. I would keep the included one and then create service. We have received an email telling us that the installation is complete. Follow the click here to get the password link. Let's use this button to copy the password into our clipboard and access our instance by clicking here. Automatically, an account has been created for us so we can go on already have an account and click on sign in. Our email address is the email address we set as admin. Usually it's your LSGO account email address. And password, we can paste it, then sign in. We arrive on that empty dashboard. We have multiple options available. Either use templates, we will see them later, or create one from scratch. Let's hit create. For this platform overview, what we are going to create is a bug tracker application for LSGO. So let's name it bug tracker. Hit OK. It automatically creates our table here with a title, options and attachments. Let's edit them. In addition of the title of the issue, we might need a description or some details. So let's name it details. We have the choice between multiple types. But for the moment, we would just be using long text to add all the information about that bug. And we have that option to make it required on forms. So we will see forms later, but for the details, it's important we have them. So let's check it and hit OK. Then we can drag and drop our column to reorder them. Let's say we will use the attachments to add screenshots. So let's make it just after the details so the user can add more information about the issue they encounter and options. Let's change it. We will change it to status. So we can double click on it and it open the edition. And instead of being a multi-select, we just want one select at the time. So it will be a select and we can define the different option. So if it's a new issue, if it's in progress or if it's finished, it's done. And then there is a small bubble here. We can choose the color for new. Let's put it in red. So it's important for us to see them. In progress, we can put in yellow, orange and down. It's green and it's not an issue anymore. It will be a new one. We won't need to set as required on forms because it just will be automatically filled and then hit OK. And we can even add more information. For example, let's say the type of issue they have. And here we can use a multi select. So what is affected by this issue? We'll add, is it the platform? Is it a template is it related to billing but it can be multiple at once and then again you can choose different colors so you can visually understand what it's about when you are used to your color scheme we won't make it with a default value and it's not required it's just additional information so okay the type it should be next to the title so here our structure of table is good we can fill some fake data. Let's say we have an issue with one of the software with the template, so soft number 12. We have one issue, so the type is related to a template, only a template. Details, it is not working. We could add some attachment and the status, it should be new automatically, but it's only when we fill a form, it's not here in the database. This view is nice for us, for the team, but for outside people, they'd prefer just to fill a form and not have a full overview of what our current issues are. What we can do is create a new view 
and we have the choice between multiple type of view. Either a grid, which is this one, gallery, you have a preview on the right, so it's some kind of cards. You have Kanban, which is like a Trello-like to-do list. Gantt, so it's more for time frame based. Calendar, architecture, and form. We will use the form one, and we choose what we want to display. We currently have only one data sheet, so we will be using this one. We have a small preview here, but you can see the status is visible. So let's create the form and we will need to hide the status. So the only solution I found is go back to the grid view. And for this one, we will hide the field because that view is linked to the data. So we'll go back to our form and now we don't see it anymore. We have few options to customize it. We can add our logo, click on select image, put your file, hit confirm. You can also change the cover image here. If you go to settings, you can hide it or display it. Show or hide your logo if you want one or not. Show the index, so it's the number in the table it is. I, I think it's fine that we keep it. Then we can edit the title of it. So instead of grid views form, we name it LSTO bug tracker. Same for the description. You discovered an issue on one of our open source template or on the platform, let us know. And then we just have the form that we can fill. So they have the choice between the different type. So here it's some text. Here it is a multi-select, so they can select multiple at once. Here it's detail, so it's a long text, so you can type on multi-lines. And the attachments, it handles multiple files easily. And then the submit button. Once you are happy with your form, you don't want them to have access to your API table instance, so you will click on the share button, create a public link, copy it in your clipboard, and you have different options, is it public or not. Do the users can submit anonymously or do they need to log in to be able to submit it? So if they have access to API table or not. But let's keep the default value. Open the link in a new tab. This is what the end users will be able to see when you share with them the link. On any of your website or your application, you will put a link to that form. They will fill it. Uh, software number 24 not working. It's related to a template and let's say billing to some details, it doesn't work, please help. I think it's the kind of message that support team really don't appreciate, but let's keep it. And then we can add some screenshots. So let's take a screenshot of this. Let's drag and drop into our attachments. You can see the uploading process, then you can remove it, download it. Once we are good, we can hit submit. Thank you for your submission, submit another response, or we can just close this tab. Now we are back on API table, we can go into our bug tracker view, and we have the new form that has been filled. I think by default we had a few lines created, so let's get rid of them. We can go here and delete record, or we can right click here and delete record. Now we have some issues, we can create a new view here. It will be a Kanban view, and we are lucky because it has been split automatically with new, in progress, and down. And the team, they will just go into the new column. They will check which one they can do, so they open it. They have some details about it. Expand the hidden fields. They have all the information. They can see the activity saying, OK, I'm taking care of it. So the rest of the team is able to communicate and see who is taking care of it. You can mention other users if you need help. Then when you start it, you drag and drop it in in progress. And once you're good, you drag and drop it into done. But you can go further. For example, you can add a widget. So let's create a new widget. You have some widgets available here. Let's take a summary. Currently what it does, it, it counts the number of rows we have, but we can update it. So more settings, configure widget. And instead of displaying total is two, we can say new issues. And we will count all the new issues. So we'll go to add filter, add filter where the status is and it's new. We confirm and we have only one new issue. You can do the same for other type of data. New issues. A target value we don't need, we can choose a different color for it. Say I want to display it in red, so it's the same than the issue color. 
OK. We can close it. And we have our widget here to have a clear overview of what is going on. If we start the new one here into in progress and new issues is updating accordingly, we are at zero, so we are working fine. We have access to this user interface to see our data, but you can connect it to any backend of your choice because automatically it generates an API. So you have a nice documentation to know how to get data. So get records. You have an example. You have the different parameters you can use to do anything to get the data like you do in the different kind of views. So you can enable sort the number of records. So if you want to do some pagination, some grouping, etc. Then you have the documentation to add the records. So you have a curl example, but you can also have a JavaScript one or a Python one. If you need to authenticate your request, you can use show API token. So you will need to create an API token. So go to developer, click on plus, it will generate for you an API token. And then when you click on show API token, here it will be replaced with the correct value. So you can just copy paste into your project. And you also have the choice to use field ID which is instead of using the column name, which can change if someone updates it in the view, use field ID, you are sure it will never change. It's linked to that specific column. It is safer, but it's less readable when you look at your code. By using the API, you can really use API table as a backend database as a service. And you can also enable some kind of automated task when anything change on one of your data. So for example, you create a new automation when there is a new value in the bug tracker and it sends you automatically an email. Let's see the different things you can do using API tables. So we have seen the different type of views, how to create tables, how to create data. We started from scratch, but instead on the left, we can use templates. So you have a huge list of templates you can use. You have the featured, the marketing ones, project management, sales and customers, product and design UX. Let's go into education, course scheduling. We can click on it and we have a preview of what it looks like. So you can see even the different views inside the different tables. If it's close to what you need and you just need some polish or you want to use it as is, you can click on use template and you have the choice where to put it in your data sheets. And if you want to use data in the template, so currently you can see we have business school, we have some data. You can keep it if you want or not keep it. And then you will have the structure. So here now I have it. You can go to all courses. I have the structure, but no data. And I can just fill it with my data. Currently, we added everything in one space, but you can create different spaces up to 10 ones. So create a new space. Best would be I create an Elestio space. OK, and I would put everything I need to inside and then I add my team, so I go to contacts and invite all the team members from LSTO. So I can create a public invitation link that I would share with the team. I copy and they can create their account. Or I invite every team members by entering their email address. As always, if you are interested in that software, I recommend you to go in the help section, developer center, it's the access to their documentation. It's a great way to discover features that can be useful for you and your projects. Thank you for watching. We hope you will give a try to API table for your data. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming platform overviews. If you want to continue discovering great free open source software with us, that video might interest you.